This video covers pre-flight checks that I strongly recommend any Bebop or Bebop 2 drone flyer should use. And I'll be covering off what you need to do before you leave the house in terms of checking the equipment and what you should do when you get to the fly zone. So before you leave the house. So the first thing to do is to check the battery. However many batteries you've got, you're going to make sure it's charged. You'll see that it's 100% charged on the mains charger when the LED on the charger unit turns from red to green. But as a double check, plug it into your controller, uh, into the drone, connect it to the controller on the smartphone or tablet, and look at the percentage battery indicator, and it should show 100% when it's fully charged. I always like to set off with a 100% charged battery. I'm lucky enough to have a couple of spares, but make sure you do that. The other thing is just check the battery for damage. If there are any cracks around the connector unit there, or the areas where it grips onto the drone, there is that risk that it could come detached during flight and you've lost your drone. So having checked the battery, connect it to the Bebop, and this applies for the Bebop too, for the Bebop, there's that messy thing of pulling out the cable connector here and fiddling around to connect it and then slide it in place. But make sure it's fully seated. Give it a wiggle. That's not moving anywhere. I now know that that's fully connected. The other two things I'm going to check before I even leave the house. One, lens cap off and check that the lens of the Bebop's not scratched and check that it's not covered in crud, dust, mud or whatever from the last flight. Polish with a soft camera lens cleaning or spectacle lens cleaning rag and you're good. Lens cap back on until it's needed. The other thing I'm checking is the propellers. I'm checking them for damage. I did damage one by putting it in a Bebop case with the propeller sticking slightly out the edge of the case which pinched it and bent it. I've had to discard that propeller. Check that they're fully seated. If not, use the seating tool to just tighten them up and you're good to go. The other thing is just check for any visible signs of, signs of damage. I know on the original Bebop a few people got chassis cracks if they had a particularly catastrophic crash. And here's the sensor that some people refer to it as a camera and it detects how high from the ground it is. Just make sure there's no rubbish or anything on that that could obstruct it. Your Bebop's now good to go. Now we're just going to check that the sky control is all okay. Straps in place. As before, check the battery's charged, check it for any damage. All looking good. Make sure it's seated nice and firmly. The other thing I would recommend you always check is where you raise and lower it to slot in your smart device, there are the connecting cables. One of these has a tendency to pop out. Make sure it's plugged in. You'll do that before you set off, but you'll also do it before you fly. This connects the controller unit to the ceramic antenna here. That come unplugged, you've got a good chance that the drone will lose contact. It's fully seated and that's all good to go. So in this case I've connected the Sky Controller by Wi-Fi to my iPad. It could just as easily be my iPhone or an Android phone or a tablet. The menu is the three horizontal dashes at the top left and the first thing I'm going to do is go into settings. This gives me the option for preloading. So for map preloading, this is very handy if your device is not 3G or 4G enabled. So I have a Wi-Fi only iPad. So while I'm out and about, um, it doesn't have internet connectivity to download map data. So I click on map preloading and zoom in onto the area that I want to look at. So let me just have a look at North Wales. Let's have a look at Flandred now where I flew recently. 
find Alice flying from the cliffs here to look over at the pier. So it's saying ready and I click on preview. And it's now downloading all of the map data onto the smart device, in this case an iPad. Just the same for your Android. That's now done. So the first thing I want to do is to calibrate the Sky Controller. You don't need to do this if you're just using the smartphone or tablet. If you are using the Sky Controller, I happen to have called mine Sky Controller Noir. I press the Calibrate button and it asks me to move the Sky Controller around as shown on the screen. And as I do so, progress bars turn yellow and against each axis they turn green. Once they're fully green, the Sky Controller is calibrated. So I don't need to go. I can change the Wi-Fi channel. I tend to leave it at the defaults. It's connected by 5 gigahertz from the iPad to the Sky Controller. And I tend to use the uh, 2 gigahertz, 2.5 gigahertz channel to connect the Sky Controller to the drone. Here, if I want to, I can customise the buttons. I'm not going to. I find they're perfectly all right as they are. And those are the settings for the Sky Controller. The other thing I want to do is check for updates. Where it says firmware update, the drone is up to date. I do this every time I fly. Before I set off out the house, I check that. If it says update is available, you'll need to download it through your smart device. If it's a Wi-Fi only one, you'll find it asks you to disconnect from the controller or the drone to connect to the internet. It'll then download it, tell you to connect back to the Sky Controller or the drone. But make sure that that's saying firmware 100% up to date. And you do it when you connect to the controller. You also do it when you connect to the drone. So having switched on the drone, it should become visible in Wi-Fi Manager. So now I go back in to check for updates and it's telling me that the drone is up to date so I don't need to download any firmware updates. I also check internal memory and I've already transferred these three videos so I'm going to delete them. If I haven't already I would select the ones I haven't transferred individually or click the top box to select all and then either transfer if you haven't already or delete if you have. I'm going to delete. This is simply so that I don't set off, start trying to record and then find out that the internal memory is full. So now I'm going to go into settings and check that the drone's all fine. Back to Sky Controller settings, I've already calibrated it. And here's the critical thing, it's currently looking for a GPS signal. I will not fly without that. It's telling me that the drone is calibrated. And here I can check the pilot settings. Maximum inclination. That governs the speed at which the drone flies. So when you're flying forward, the greater the angle at which it's tipped forward, the faster it will fly in that direction. If you want very nice lingering scenic shots, scenic shots, you may want to slow it down. It will not travel very quickly. Set it to 35 degrees and the thing will whiz along at maximum speed. For most flights, about 50%, 17%. And the inclination speed is the speed at which it changes angle. So the slowest it can move is 80 degrees a second. That means it will take one second to go from where it is to its maximum in inclination speed. There it will be really whippy. 
So if you are doing something like trying to follow a fast moving speedboat or a sports car or something that's moving quickly, even wildlife if you're that brave, you'll need to set the maximum inclination speed and the maximum inclination. So not only can it move quickly, it can change direction quickly. Again, about 50% is standard for most flights. There's the maximum altitude. I never go above 100 meters. You can go up to about 111 meters, 112 meters in the UK, providing it's safe. Any higher than that and you're above the 400 feet. And the maximum distance, how far away it will fly. And what that means is if I set it to 49 meters, it will not fly further away from me than that. As soon as it get that, gets that far, it will not move any further away. You'll get a beeping on your smartphone or your sky controller to tell you that it's at maximum distance. This is handy if you're flying where you're say 200 meters from a motorway or a bridge or telegraph wires or tall trees that you want to avoid, but you're in a safe place a good distance away. As I'm using a sky controller, I know I'm good for up to a kilometre, providing it's unbroken line of sight. But those are my default positions, around about 80, 90 metres at maximum altitude and around about half a kilometre maximum distance. The maximum vertical speed is how quickly it climbs and falls. So that it will climb or descend at six metres a second. Again, I tend to have it about half, if I'm feeling, uh, filming really scenic shots, I'll make sure it can't zip up and down. It's nice and gentle movement, which is for better photography. Maximum rotation speed is how fast it will rotate. So panning from left to right. And again, if you're filming beautiful scenery and you don't want the camera whipping round, you'll set it quite slow. If on the other hand, you're filming moving objects, you might want it faster. Again, for most things, about half. Banked turn is relatively self-explanatory. Some people have had problems with a banked turn. I never use it. I did try it out, but I find that it uh, doesn't really enhance the filming or the flying. Really, all I think it does is it makes it look a bit cooler when it's flying. Calibrate is something that, even if it says it doesn't need calibrating, I tend to do it every flight anyway, just to be safe and flat trim. That tells the camera what horizontal looks like. So if you place your drone on a, an uneven surface to take off, which you would try and avoid, but if the drone is lying on a slope left to right, you'll find that as you fly the horizon is at an angle. So flat trim, set it on a flat surface, flat, set flat trim and you'll tell the drone what horizontal looks like. Then if you put it on a slightly uneven surface, it will know it's on an uneven surface and compensate in filming. By default, you will probably have it on video mode, and I'm not gonna go into the details. If you're just taking photographs, you go into photo mode, and you can take it in RAW, JPEG, or a 180 degree fisheye JPEG. I have it by default set at JPEG, but by default, it's usually in video mode. I'm not going to go into the details on this video. I'll cover that off some other time. Image settings. You have it on the light bulb if you're using artificial light. On a sunny day, you'll have it on that. On a cloudy day, you'd have it on the picture of the cloud. And for flash photography or uh, flickering lights, you'd have it on that. It's possible to set the contrast using the slider and it's possible to set the brightness using the slider. Again, the only adjustment I ever make on this is if it's a sunny day, I'll press the sun icon and leave it at that. If it's cloudy, press the cloud. Here we have the Wi-Fi settings. Again, I'm not going to go into that detail. As you can see, it's connected to the Bebop on a 2.4 gigahertz channel. 
And that's the connection from the Sky Controller to the Bebop. That to me is a critical connection because the Bebop is going to be traveling a long way from the Sky Controller. The connection from the Sky Controller, and again, if you're not using a Sky Controller, apologies, bear with me. If you're using a Sky Controller with your iPad or your tablet lodged in it, well, they're never going to be far apart from each other. So a five gigahertz network is perfectly stable. But as many people have found, the 2.4 gigahertz signal, when the drone is a long way from the controller, can, and it's not guaranteed, can give you a more stable distance. And the motor information um, simply tells you that the four motors are okay. If anybody's crashed, if anybody's never crashed, I'm quite interested in that. Um, but for those of us that are normal and make mistakes, uh, you'll see that if it crashes into a tree, one or more of the motors will have been impeded and will flash up red. And it's a case of restarting the drone to reset the motor as okay. If that doesn't work, you have probably damaged a motor and are in the business of scouring eBay for a replacement motor or of course buying one from the official Bebop site. And this is telling me the versions. That Free Flight 3 is on version 3.9.23, the Bebop's on version 3.3, .3, and the GPS is on 2.01, and the hardware's on version 2. I happen to know that those are up to date, but as I said earlier, regularly checking on your menu, check for updates, just to be sure. So having done those checks, you're now at the fly zone and the most important thing is to check that your surroundings are safe for you, for other people and for your drone. Flying close to airfields and airports is a no-no, but also think about the flight paths. You may be a long way from an airport, but you might be near where there are low-flying aircraft. And don't forget about model aircraft, radio-controlled aircraft and other drones. Overhead power lines, telephone lines, love to eat up drones and spit them down to the ground so keep an eye out for those across your whole flight path obviously trees giraffes are a big problem here in the uk and mutated lizards but the biggest thing to check before you fly is that your gps signal is strong green on the controller and make sure that it knows where to return home if it gets lost Without that signal, your drone could fly off into the distance, never to be seen again. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please press like, and if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Happy flying!